We have a saying around here. Oh yeah? Yeah, no brains, no headache. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, boys. What's up? What's up? Damn, son, where'd you find this? Episode 215, No Brains, No Headache podcast. Happy to be here, Dan. Glad to do it. The name's Jordan Weichel. I'm going to be your host today. And we have quite the show lined up for you. Plenty of doozies and talking points with my co-host, confident, longtime friend. He's a fellow comedian. I call him Ongo, and you can call him Matt Cleary. Matt, we're wearing a robe. I'm a robe guy now. Okay. Officially a robe guy. I'm the golf guy, you're the robe guy. That's the nice thing about a podcast. You can take on these alter egos and just kind of run with them. I don't want to tell anyone how to live their life, but this is the best $17 I've ever spent. Yeah, what is that? Um, Velvet? Whatever they make in China. Oh, so not Velvet. Yeah, then. but oh my God, this is so comfortable. I actually do. I have a blanket like that, and one side is like <laughs> that, and then the other side's not that. I, I'll take that puppy to bed like a little kid going to you know bed with his blankie, and I sleep way better with it. It's just so soft against the skin. I I think blankets might be the best invention of all time. And the weighted blankets, especially for you? Or? Those didn't last very long with me. Those got chewed up. Yeah. And it okay. started leaking the beads. It was like sand. <laughs> so I had just feels sand. like a bag of sand. <laughs> and so that's I just had you ever touched a boob before? <laughs> I had a real, uh, you know, long weekend. I call it a shotgun weekend. Why do you call it that? Because you get real drunk one night out of the gate. Yep, pile of shit the next day, drink again the next day. So it's like you're reloading. And yeah, then at the yeah. end of the weekend, you want to blow your head off. With a shotgun. Yeah. Oh, right on. I would call that like a double barrel shotgun. Yeah. You shoot one. I guess the double barrel is kind of simultaneous. You don't really have to reload and cock. So that doesn't really make What I'm saying doesn't make sense. Yeah, but it sounds good. This is No Brains, No Headache Podcast, all right? The mindlessly entertaining show coming to you live from Bismarck, North Dakota. That's our insurance policy, people. If you don't like it, that's on you for listening to a show called No Brains, No Headache. A uh, hot take. I don't like Summer Shandy very much. The the beer. Yep. The alcoholic beverage. No, I don't like it either. I think it's wildly overrated. I went to a music festival years ago, and uh, Summer Shandy was the limited amount of beers you could have on tap within the concert bowl. It's like uh, Miller Lite or Summer Shandy, and you're like, great. Yep, so I drank my. That was actually the only two options <laughs> yeah. you could call. Oh, you were there. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go sober. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I drank you know, my body weight and then some in Summer Shandies, and it was one of those things after the weekend was over. I don't even want to smell it. I don't even want to smell lemon. It's. It, I just, like, for whatever reason, when it came out, I thought it was, like, the greatest thing ever, and I had one for the first time yesterday in like and you probably were thinking like oh i'm gonna have a shandy it's gonna hit the spot and, and then it, you just spit it out you're yeah. like this is pine salt yeah. uh, you know what i did is i literally went and dumped it out and grabbed myself a diet dr pepper and had that so you weren't at an establishment no i was at my mom's oh okay so you didn't like have to you know like dump a whole tall beer out if you're at an establishment and you got a tall summer shandy but it doesn't taste very good. What are you doing? Are you just going to huck her down? How drunk am I at this point? Uh, let's just say it's earlier in the day, so not, you're kind of maybe on your way. What I'm going to do is have them get it out of my face, but I'll still pay for it. Okay. I'll be like, I'm just going to order like a bush light, but take this. You're like, sorry, I tried to go with, you know... With a good decision here, and my taste buds have other plans. Or when you go to a restaurant and you have them say the entire tap list, and then you just get what you always get. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing that just to make sure the people are on. Yeah. Do you have a, the Sam Adams seasonal? Yeah, we do. Okay, I'll do a bush light. Yeah. <laughs> can I get the, uh, can I sample the pumpkin spice lager? And also the black porter and the stout and the amber bock? <laughs> 
And then you do all of those. You take one sip out of it because it tastes like used mortar oil with a hint of dust from a homeless man's ass crack. And you're like, you know what? I'll do a bush light. One time I was on this date. This was years ago. <laughs> And I think I had to take a shit or something because I was in the bathroom and I came back and the girl I was with was like, oh, I ordered you the oatmeal porter. Who the hell are you, man? Isaac fucking Newton. And I was like, what have I done in my life that would ever make you think that I would enjoy an oatmeal porter? I can see why this didn't last. Yeah, it was brutal. (laughs) Worst four years of my life. I got you the oatmeal porter. You're like... I got my keys in my pocket, and I'm going to use them to start my car and drive away now. This is fun. Not really. You can pay for that. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye, my love. <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> what does he say when he's like, yeah, they really get mad at you when you flee the scene of an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Fell off the jetway again. Do any flying? You got the trip coming up. Yep. Going to Chicago, watch the Cubbies. Yeah, don't want to get too off subject. We do have a, a sports segment coming up towards the end, but the Cubs are hot right now, and I realize that it's a lot like uh, the Minnesota Vikings, my other favorite uh, sports team. My mood and emotion is pretty dependent on their success. So right now, uh, what as of the recording, six games, six games in a row, one nine of ten. And I have a phenomenon, I think I may have mentioned it on the show before, but summertime, I'm at the lake cabin. When I'm watching the Cubs at the lake cabin, they're a, ni- they're a 900 win percent team when I'm watching them from the lake. Okay. Yeah, And I have a witness. My dad is my witness. He's like, oh, the Cubs, <laughs> they're going to win again. They were up... Uh, what was it? Seven to two in the ninth, and then scored seven runs yeah, to they, win fourteen they, to two. They recently, in the last fifteen games, discovered what an insurance run is, yeah. and they've been scoring them a lot. Yeah, that insurance, you know, it's a real bugger until you need it. I mean, PCA has like been the best player in baseball over the last month. Yes, yes, he has. But we are not a Cubs podcast, so we're not going to delve too deep. They're hot. We're happy. And that's that episode 215, No Brains, No Headache podcast. Uh, we have quite the lineup for you, so without further ado, let's get into it. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Okay. Let's party. Did you see that there was two people that went to space okay. for eight days? Oh, I and, didn't think I did see And this. now they're staying there for like six months. So what was the issue? What's going on? Is this an Apollo 13 Tom Hanks situation? I think it's more of like a Martian situation. Like the, the moon's not lining up for it to make sense for them. And it's Boeing. No, let's, let's just back up a touch. The moon's not lining up. Yeah. What do but, you mean by that? Well, have you heard of waves in the ocean? Yeah. Um, I didn't really think it was a follow-up to that. but You think I didn't know what a wave in an ocean was? <laughs> well, that's uh, been a long weekend. But the moon turns also. Okay, it, the moon, here is Earth, and then here's the moon. And now they're rotating at a, are they, the, the people get stuck on the moon, they're here, and Earth is here, and now the moon's like this, and they're over here. I'm not really sure why I'm trying watch to watch it on YouTube. Yeah, it'll m- help a lot. Most of what I know about the moon is from the third Transformers movie. There's a third Transformers movie? Dark of the Moon. Okay. There's also three Mark Wahlberg Transformers movies, and those are terrible. I actually am not shocked. I think Mark Wahlberg has dipped his toes in every franchise one way or another. So the moon, the people are on the moon? No, they're on like a space station. They're in orbit. Yeah. Now it's what? A, and so what happened? You think the moon got flipped? I don't know why I brought the moon into this argument. Now that I'm thinking about yeah, it, yeah. What does the moon? <laughs> what does the moon have to do with anything? They probably could have a better view than we do. The moon tides in the ocean. Okay the the moon does have an effect on tides in the ocean. How does that get to NASA people? Is this NASA? Um, they they work for Boeing. Whatever. Two. <laughs> Two humans are stuck in orbit in space, and it's as a result of the tide from the moon? 
You didn't do your research at all. Oh, no. You I read, read one headline. Jordan, I told you. Read you read a half of a headline. I didn't, <laughs> you didn't you. even read the whole headline. It was behind a paywall. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> Like, oh, this looks like a really interesting article. Oh, guess I'll never know. Off to a hot start here, <laughs> NBNH Podcast. I came up with they're going to make a TV show out of this because it's... Are they already making a TV show? They are going to. This this is a lot like the plot of the movie Gravity. It's just with, like that show Space Force that just oh, never took off. It's so bad. Um, what, so, so tell me everything you know about this. I'm going to shut up. I want you to riddle off all the facts that you know. Okay, so... In in 1972. <laughs> yeah. 1969, we went to the moon. So there's a bunch of stuff up there from it. Um, and then these people went because they worked for Boeing. And they were supposed to go for eight days. And they ended up, now they're up there for six months. It's pretty much... Oh, this Our is generation. This is you building your own oh, God. business. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. This is pretty much our generation's Gilligan's Island. Okay, they, they went for eight space. days. And now they have to spend six months. They went on a three hour tour on Gilligan's Island. It's a Boeing Starliner spacecraft. Boeing's pretty, pretty good in the headlines the last couple of years. <laughs> So this is just one. This is saying one astronaut. Is this the right? No, it's two. Oh, this was written today. Today. Maybe one of them died. Stranded astronaut reports eerie pulsing sound coming from troubled Boeing spacecraft as NASA reveals source of mysterious noise. There's two people up there. Butch Wilmore, who was trapped aboard the ISS with fellow astronaut... Sonny Williams, and we got a pop-up, son of a bitch. Yeah. After the Starliner started experiencing problem following its maiden crude voyage in June. And you know what they're doing? They're having Elon Musk go get them. I, I mean, I'm sure. Do you think this is a Call publicity a stunt? Um, yes and no. Mainly no. Do you think that this is aliens trying to communicate with us? No, I'm sure there's just a loose part on it. It's just like bolt. kink, 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 kink. Um, also, it's tough to be up there. I mean, these two people, they could bang, but you can't get a boner in space. You can't? No. Why not? I don't know. Like you're not supposed to or you can't? No, like I don't think you physically can. I don't Get me a space suit. I will <laughs> prove this wrong. I don't know if there's any like validity to that statement. I just heard it one time, and I believed it okay. my entire life. We need to hire a uh, producer ASAP. Can you get an erection without a prostate? <laughs> without testicles in space. See, it's the fifth one down. Oh, okay, there you <laughs> go. Can you get an erection in a coma? Yes, it's possible to get an erection in space. My whole life's a lie. Some say the environment can even enhance arousal. Some astronauts have described the experience as space Viagra. Viva Viagra. I think you could get hard on in space? I don't know. I can't even get hard on. <laughs> what? Um, sure, go to space. Can't get hard on. Step. Go to church for five minutes. Oh, yeah. Did you go to church? I did. You did go to church. No, I didn't. I did, I did pray, though, right before our meal. Stop. You, if when the Cubs don't win the World Series, this is on you. Side note, back to the Cubs. Sorry, we're not a Cubs podcast. That's my bad. Matt texted me when the Cubs are down, I don't know, 10 to 3 in like the seventh inning, that if the Cubs come back and win, he'll go to church on Sunday. The Cubs came back 114-10. I said, Matt, get your ass to church. He said he didn't go to church. I'll go You're eventually. wearing a Will Ferrell Chaz from <laughs> Wedding Crasher robe right now. And this is all just coming to me, okay? This is like, I don't know what's going on. Why don't you try getting jacked off under the table in front of the whole damn family and have some real problems? I what, would, a hot older woman made you feel her cans? Stop crying like a little girl. I need to start fact-checking things because people tell me something and I immediately just believe it. you talking about the space thing or are you going to it, church? Uh, no, the boner thing in no, space. Oh, the bone diddly? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, according to the AI Google search, not only is it possible to get aroused in space, but sometimes the environment has a turboing effect, giving rise to a nickname for the experience, Space Viagra. Somebody said, I had an erection so intense it was painful. So what you said couldn't have been more yeah, untrue. That one's Oh, okay. you can't get a boner in space. Turns out, and no brains, no headache is the factual uh, evidence here. We are the source for facts. I could have drilled through kryptonite, said homeboy with his boner. Didn't mean to start talking about boners, but here we are, fully torqued in space. Yeah, we've been weaving in and out of boners and cubs, cubs for... Well, you know what? If you are on the voyage that we call No Brains, No Headache podcast, first of all, thank you for listening and welcome to any new listeners, followers, viewers out there. Happy to have you. Uh, welcome to the winning team. Now, Matt over here, uh, he spends his weekends getting drunk and ordering Chinese robes instead of like reading two paragraphs of an article. I'm a headline. You know what I did for all the stuff that I have coming up? I just glossed over an article related. Too much work. Okay. It's not entertaining if I give you facts. That is true. That is true. Yin yin and yang. Myth busted on NBNH. You can get a boner in space. It has been uh, debunked. Here on NBNH. Any more space talk? No. Wishing the best to those two. Yeah. What if they have a space baby? That'd be nuts. That would be wild. But you can't get a boner, apparently. So, uh, moving on, we got some kind of related news. Um, I don't know if you saw this, Matt, but U.S. citizens who were detained abroad, uh, in this particular case in Russia, they get back from being imprisoned, and the IRS is like, welcome back. Here's what you owe us. Now, mind you, uh, there's a journalist named Jason, and he returned to the U.S. in 2016 after being wrongfully imprisoned in Iran for 544 days. He gets back, and he said, I got one of those bills from the IRS saying, you owe this much on this year and this much on this year because of failure to pay on time. Here's the interest. I also saw another one. People from Russia, people were in prison in Russia. They get back and their family's like, we are poor now. We're poor. Because not only were you in prison for the last four years and therefore no income, we owe on taxes. But how does that work if you don't have any income? How can I pay taxes on no income? The income was, was the moldy bread they gave us. Every other week. It's one of those situations, like, don't you think they've suffered enough? Well, clearly the IRS just has no soul. It's like it's like your grandparents die, and then they're like, the IRS five years later is like, we haven't received anything. It's literally the plot from, of like every, from Robert. every like, single. Uh, Robert died. Yeah, every single. It's a, a lot of like the plot of Happy Gilmore. Couldn't afford the taxes. Okay, well, the grandma and Happy Gilmore First of all, I'm going to go ahead and say it, overrated character. Now she's sweet, and we get it. Happy Gilmore, he's got a soft spot for his grandma. I get it. You know, she dressed up as Gene Simmons and wrote him fake letters from Gene Simmons. That's pretty cool. However, she got him into a real pickle. You don't pay your taxes if you're, you know, grandma wasn't in Russia getting chained up and tortured. Grandma was laying on the couch watching the fucking Price is Right. Excuse my language. And then she gets mad at us. She gets mad at other people. No, oh, Grandma's got to take a little bit of responsibility, and she didn't. Now, these people who are detained in Iran and Russia and God knows where else, they get back to the homeland of the United States. And this one I saw here, on I wanted to talk to you about... Uh, This person was released in a prisoner swap that received help from Hostage U.S. Now, Hostage U.S. is an organization that provides resources to hostage families and hostages upon their return. Maybe one of the resources could be giving them $6,000 to cover the IRS bill. It's like, oh, I'm going to start a charity. That's so great. What's the charity? We're uh, going to get hostages back. 
We're going to deal with Al Qaeda directly to get hostages. Imagine back. that company's Rolodex of contacts they have. Like the amount of like drug lords, criminals. That has to be know. just insane. I don't think, I don't think a U.S. Know. based charity is dealing with drug lords. Apparently oh. they are. Or the Russian government. They Well, they did a prisoner swap. So I don't know. What if they just got a guy that was really good at like fantasy football trades? Yeah. And like, all right, we need you to work something out here. We just got like Larry the Cable guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has like a marker board in a basement. Just, all right, just draw on lines from other things. It's like, all right, we get Greg back and we give them $2.3 trillion. They just have like Tom Arnold <laughs> from Austin Powers. What did you eat? <laughs> Who does number two work for? Yeah, that's right. You tell him. <laughs> Show that turd who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Homeboy ended up paying $6,000 to the IRS. At one point, it ballooned up to $22,000. This is according to Fox News, written in June of 2024. Uh, if you're mad at me for using Fox News, literally just the top search. So, um, wait, that was NPR. <laughs> oh, forget everything I just said. <laughs> We're having a real fucking dynamite episode right Okay, now. the next one's Fox. You know what? This is no brains, no headache. Uh, I took a nap before this, okay? It was one of those days where I had a little siesta on the couch and then I had to take a shower before I came over to the studio just to kind of wake up, wipe the bags off under my eyes. I had uh, the reverse. You know how sometimes you go from in your bed and then you just get up and immediately just go lay on the couch to take a nap? One of those days, I fell asleep on the couch, and then when I woke up in the morning, I went to bed. Did the old reverse. Yeah. Well, at my apartment, uh, you've been there before, but I have my walk-in closet, which goes into my bathroom, which goes out into my kitchen slash living room, which goes into my bedroom. So it's just a circle. I'll, there's mornings where I'll just kind of walk a couple laps <laughs> aimlessly. I'm trying to figure I'll out. get what. up, get out of bed, do my thing, walk a couple laps, and then just back into bed. It's not great. As Matt yawns, tired? Is it no. the robe? Is podcasting in a robe maybe not the best oh, idea we've ever had on the show? I've never been more comfortable. You're too comfortable. You're yawning on air. You see that over there? Okay, that's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> that is a camera, okay? People are watching us. So you got to keep that in mind. But I just, I mean, I wanted to bring this up. I was getting the old oil change the other day watching Fox News. That's why I thought it was Fox. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was watching, and I was just, you should have seen the look on my face. I was just like, these people get back from Russia, and the IRS is like, one of those no you, welcome back basket for you. <laughs> one of those where you're watching something, and you're like looking around to see if anyone else is seeing the Well, same I thought thing. I was the only one watching it, and then the oil change dude just goes, Oh my God! Does our country not have anything better to do? <laughs> or whatever he said, yeah. I was like, "Oh, I thought I was the only one watching this." I tell you what, that's probably why it took forever to get your oil changed. No, the guy it was wasn't. Just, the guy's I, just sitting down next to you for like yeah. forty-five minutes. He's oh, like, hey, when did you get there? Well, I better get to work. <laughs> yeah, your car's just sitting in the parking lot. <laughs> no, I actually have a fix on the oil change uh, system. You could say you just got to show up right when they open, sharp, seven thirty a.m. Now, the coffee is going to be a bit watered down, a bit burnt, but you can't really complain because you can zip in and out of there. You don't even finish your coffee. I go get my oil changed at a place that has one of those super expensive, like, computer ones where you can, like, click what kind of coffee and, like, what creamer and sugar you want in it and stuff. I can never figure it out, so I never get coffee there. <laughs> You're just standing there. <laughs> Well, wait, seeing if anybody will help you and just like i'll click on a couple of things and then it'll be like nothing will happen i'll be like all right i just go sit back down maybe eat a granola bar if they have that super duper yeah it's just after a certain price they don't like to pay for coffee so the free cups really hit it hard say you're in a foreign country you come back the irs says hey you owe us some money what are you doing going back to the foreign country. i was like <laughs> yeah you know i'm just gonna hit the return flight yep I, they brought me a two-way, so I'm going to go bunk up with Brittany Griner in the Russian prison. At least we got some weed to smoke. Uh, so, yeah, moral of the stream. If you do, have a sit down with your family. 
make a plan, make an emergency plan. Say, hey, if I get imprisoned in a Chinese torture camp, you need to stay up on my taxes. Wouldn't hurt to feed my goldfish and water my plants every once in a while. But taxes, that's going to be at the top of your thoughts and prayers. Is Dear Lord, Matt's over here praying because he's a prayer now. He says, Dear Lord, please help me remember to pay my son's taxes. Also keep him safe. <laughs> also don't let him die. But please allow me to find the strength and the courage to pay the taxes of my family member who is imprisoned in a foreign country. <laughs> I just thought of something. If you're in a coma and you come out of this coma, if you're in it for a year, you just come out of the coma to crippling debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd suck. Yeah. Have a talk with your family. Say, hey, if I go into a coma, give it like a week. And after that week, let's start making some funeral plans. I mean, if I'm not in a coma, still do the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> Let's just do it anyway. U.S. prisoners in Russia getting boned hard by the IRS. Who are you in the friend group? Do I have options? Uh, you can choose. I just have to make it up. Yeah. I mean, I can give you mine. You go, go ahead. I'm the one that no one expects anything from. Unless it's me. I expect a lot out of you. It's just Manny being Manny. Manny being Manny? Yep. Take Manny Ramirez? Yeah, when he would do something really dumb. Oh. They'd be like, that's just Manny being Manny. It's like the it's New like, York Jets just being the New York Jets. Yeah. Dysfunctional. It's just, it's, yeah, that's kind of me. Yeah, no, that actually is uh, pretty accurate. And the nice part about that for you is if you do do something, it's a big surprise. It's a nice little pleasant treat. You're like, wow. <laughs> You'd be surprised. He got me a summer shandy? What a nice guy. It turns out you just didn't want to drink it. Uh, yeah, like yesterday I went out to have some beers with um, some friends, and I got there first, so I started a tab. And shocked. Then, and then I just accidentally paid the whole tab. And they're like, thanks for doing that. And I was like, I did what? <laughs> how much? How much was that? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't care. What friend am I in the friend group? First of all, don't really have friends, so I don't know if you yeah. could make it a friend group. Um, I guess maybe I used to be uh the the partier. I don't know. Is that a is that a friend oh, yeah. in the friend group? Oh, the yeah. partier. I guess I still am to a certain extent. Um, it oh here flows. here's I'm the jokester. I mean. Is that much of a surprise? No, probably not. I'm the jokester. I want to keep it light. Um, yeah, I just want to just like make sure everybody's having a really good time. I'm trying to get my two cents in. You are a little bit of a vibe curator. Yes. Sometimes. I, I can curate vibes. Uh, that's what I do. I just want to make sure everybody's doing great. Like one thing that, you know, if you're in a friend group, one thing that bothers me in modern day is people not introducing people like to each other. I have seen men bring their new girlfriend out with the boys, if you will, if, you, if that's what you want to call them, the fellas, the gang, the crew, the posse, and they just like sit down. No introduction or anything. It's like, who's your friend? You shouldn't have to ask. And that's so rude to your guests too. It's like introduce your guests so they don't sit there awkwardly. It's so weird to me. So I want to make sure everybody knows each other. I want to make sure everybody's having a good time. You can get in trouble with a little bit too much of a people-pleasing aspect there. So you kind of got to watch out. But if you're out socializing, you're out, and that's the objective to have a good time, I think that's where people-pleasing is just fine. The people-pleasing is when it, you let it interfere with your own personal life, and you're going out of your way trying to make other people feel good and well when maybe they don't deserve it. And I'm not saying people don't deserve to be, you know, treated kindly, but that's when you go out of your way to people, please. I don't know why I went on this little uh, tangent, but my saying is I want to make sure everybody's having a good time. I like when people don't know me, but then they're like, they, like, I just meet them and like the next time that I'm supposed to like be someplace that the, like, that we'd be together, be like, oh yeah, Matt said he's going to try to make it. I'm not coming. 
He said he was going to try. Yeah, or and, I, and you probably did. You probably did say that. Uh, I was like, huh, should I go? No. It's just, it's a lot to try all the time. Yeah, it does uh, does get to be a bit much, but... Yeah, I pretty much just want to make sure everybody's having a, a a blast. I do like it when people are like, I don't even know what you do. It's like, let's keep it that way. Yep. I don't like that. And that shot, I must not be doing a very good job. My life is an open book. There's 200 and now 15 episodes of me just like telling you about my life. Yep. Go on any social media. I don't, I'll, sh- I'll share whatever. I don't care. I, I, I truly don't. I don't care. You want to check it out? Go for it. If you don't, that's that's fine too. That's that's that. Uh, I do not like it. However, I mean it's okay, but it sometimes gets old when you're me- out meeting people, you know, getting acquainted, mutual friends, acquaintances, whatever. And it's like, oh hey, this is Matt. He's a comedian. It's like, <laughs> let me let me do that. Yeah. And and then that because that immediately is just like oh this guy's a huge piece of shit. <laughs> this guy has no real job. <laughs> this guy has oh, no comedian. Future. You say also here's unemplo- a couple bucks. <laughs> yeah. so I feel bad for you. It's just like one of those where it's like uh yeah I'm an entrepreneur. What doing what? Well, and that's I mean that's how I started to introduce myself. Although it, it it's it's a it's a dead end road. Oh, I'm a full time entrepreneur. Guess what your follow up question is? What do you do? Got a Couldn't lot. you just take my word for it? I got a lot of irons. I am in a the fire. porn star. <laughs> I have a huge dong, and I fly out to Miami and L.A. on the weekly. You do? What do you do? <laughs> no, I just said it a moment ago. <laughs> yeah, you get some real dumb questions. What do you do? And then I tell them, and they're just sawing logs bored. Yeah. <laughs> you asked. You asked for this. So what friend am I in the friend group? I don't know. I kind of bipolar sometimes. Yeah, you uh, really pivoted from I'm making sure that everyone's having a good time to don't ask me fucking stupid questions. <laughs> well, it's when other people, like, tell your story for you, which is fine, but it's just like, I think the comedian thing, especially in these parts, it's such a new thing, a new form of art and entertainment. It's a new it's a new career path for residents of Bismarck Mandan. Until we came along, yes, comedians came to Bismarck and Mandan, but until we started doing what our, we're doing with our fellow comedians out there, all the Bismarck and Mandan guys, comedian was not a career path in this area. You ever think about that? I mean, if you're paying me to do something, that sounds like a job to me. Yep. So it's such a new thing when people are immediately like, oh, this is Jordan. He's the comedian. It's like, son of a bitch. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Tell me a joke. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll write you some jokes from prison because I'm about to murder somebody. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just, I don't know. When I want people to introduce you, but don't like when tell their story for them. When someone says, tell me a joke, I go to that scene where in Bruce Almighty, when he's like 44 Magnum lethal, (laughs) and it's like, that's me just, yeah, it's a, gets me going, but no, you, you have to have one in the arsenal lock cocked, ready to cock, but, and that's what I, (laughs) that's what I locked cocked, ready to rock. Sorry. That's what I do. What do you do if your girlfriend starts smoking? Slow down. Use some lube. <laughs> Jordan, you're so funny. Thank you. Now fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving on. Yep. Oh boy. Rocky bomb. <laughs> oh, that's me. There's I want to talk about uh say you're at church, you know, cuz you're a big church goer now or a public speaker, or a work meeting, something where your attention needs to be undivided towards somebody or something that has, um, you know, control of all of the focus in the room. 
And then your phone starts ringing, and it's like, ah! <laughs> you don't know where it is. People don't ever know where their phone is when it starts ringing when it's not supposed to, and it's always the worst ringer. Hey. It's like a, it's like a, a sonar alarm. It's like, boop, boop. It's like, what? They're all like alarms that like I'm. I change my alarm every like three or four months, and it just pisses me off to a new level. It's like you're sitting there, and they're like. And then on the third day, Jesus Christ. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and then you can't get. Uh, you, uh, 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 hey, mom, I'll call you back. You can't get, what? You can't get your finger in the little thing on the side of the iPhone to turn it off. Or, or the guy who kicks over his empty coffee mug against, you know, the hard floor, and it's just clanking against the ground. The guy who drops his keys, perhaps, and apparently he's a janitor because there's a hundred <laughs> keys on that ring. Uh, wow, I just completely. Well, forgot. What do you think of the like when that happens? Are, are you just is is it just you or the whole room? Because this happened to me at an event recently where somebody dropped something and it was just like all of the focus that was up front was now on homeboy in row three seat J, and <laughs> it's just like. It, dude, figure it, and they freak out. It's like, can't you just calmly, you know, grab your mug, calmly grab your phone? And why is your phone on? Come on, I even this is your chance to ignore things. Um, there's not a moment that brings a room together to hate one person than that person's phone going off at a quiet event. Yeah, so I have my networking event weekly and. You know, I got I got a friend there where we kind of just judge people. And, yeah, this happened. We both just looked at each other. And th I think it's a universal glare slash rolling of the eyes. We're just like, oh, oh my, my God. God. Like, seriously, Glenn, you can't figure it out. Did you, what, did you put a glob of Vaseline on your coffee mug this morning? Because it sure is slick. And the most <laughs> jump to conclusions thing, like, that happens, you're like, should we kill him? Yeah. <laughs> we should tell him to never come back yeah. to this free event. <laughs> it's just, I think that I, we need to bring back. I don't want to say the M word, but I think <laughs> murder should be on the table. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was just to say, I think we should bring back, you know, make it more common of just taking somebody, you know, the back alley. And Woodshed. Beating the brakes <laughs> off of them. Just like, get over here. You're going to leave your phone on again and just socking them in the gut. Come back out of like the bathroom, just bleeding. All right, we're good. <laughs> Please proceed. Oh uh, yeah, I just want to talk about that person at the event who, and it's always like, it's always like soccer mom, or it's always like bald guy who has the phone on the hip. Ooh, no! I now I remember what I was gonna say. Do you remember? Do you ever? Does this ever happen to you where you think? You have like all your groceries in one hand and you need your keys and it's always yep. on the one yep. side. It's never like the convenient side. Bingo. It's always in the pocket that you don't have access to. Yeah, living in the apartment life, I, I have to deal that with that a lot. Grabbing stuff from my car, going to an elevator, trying to lock my apartment door. So I, I just I get my digits out there and I'll put like my apartment keys, my car keys, and my water bottle. I just got them in the hand because when my hands are full, and then it, it still doesn't work out. You still got to set your shit down. It's a whole thing. It is just an entire thing. At my apartment, I have underground parking, and they did some concrete drilling, like in the ceiling of the underground or the floor of the first level, however you want to look at it. And they did this and had us move our cars out, you know, to avoid damage and getting dirty and whatnot. <laughs> And they just drilled these holes and then didn't clean anything up. <laughs> so there's just, like, dust piles every 10 feet and, like, shrapnel and, like, concrete chunks. It's like, well, they were hired to drill the concrete, not to clean it up. Well, it's like, come on. And uh, then I do want to be the asshole because we couldn't park in our parking spot. That's not a free spot, by the yeah. way. So we couldn't park in our spot for one day. And I was like, so are we going to get prorated for this, <laughs> the math? Three dollars and sixty cents. 
I swear to God, if I have to pay that three dollars, it's, it's a couple cents. diet Dr. P's. That is a couple DDPs. Um, DDP King, rise up. Uh, Hashtag blessed. Um, so there is that. I guess I don't really have much more. You know, smoke a little grass. Um, what is one unwritten rule that you break the most? And I'll give you two options. Uh, picking up other people's golf balls when you shouldn't. Uh, I mean, you are enemy number one maybe in the country for that <laughs> i'm just kidding i don't do that um do you not brush your teeth for three minutes or you're supposed you, to for three minutes or not wash your hands for 30 seconds definitely the teeth one i would say i'm a big uh hand washer you know you blow up the toilet you're gonna <laughs> want to wash that filth off of your skin and, uh, yeah, I'm always touching, you know, the phone, trying not to bite my fingernails, but it, it's a little bit better if you wash your hands, I guess. Still I feel not like, great. I feel like if I brush my teeth for three minutes, I would just be bleeding all over the place. I didn't know it was three minutes. I, here's Even the, if it's two minutes. Here's the deal. They're my teeth, so I will brush them for as long as I see fit. Uh Actually, too, I've been actually trying to get better at, like, con more consistently brushing me my teeth. I'm not saying I have terrible hygiene, uh, but sometimes I'll just brush my teeth, like, middle of the day or early evening just for an extra little cleansing, extra little clean. I'll do that randomly. Or, you know, say we have open mic night every Wednesday. Come check it out. Brush the teeth before that. You go and do an event, brush your teeth real quick. You can do the mouthwash. That's more of just like a refresher, though. You brush your teeth. Your teeth are feeling slick. They're feeling good and clean. And you're going to have a lot more confidence out there. Also, dental health. Maybe just, like, look into that. I, if there's a town out there, I was talking to some people where they were playing a game in a small town, and one of them had to find a bald man and kiss the head. And they said there were more people with no teeth than no hair. In this particular town. Seems weird. I know it is weird. But I, that's what they said. I will like zone out when I'm washing my hands sometimes. And I'll wash my hands for closer to three minutes. Do you ever get to the motion sensor sinks and you're sitting there and you're you're pretty much Jane off air for a yeah, while. You, you're, you're like DJing at some point because you just keep going in and out, in and out. I even like to go the extra mile and just kind of help out the next person coming. I'll grab the paper towel and then I'll I'll wand it so another one comes out ready for the next guy. I'm making this world a more productive place. By making... By prepping hand towels for the next guy who blows up the bathroom at the watering hole. Yes. God, there's... Uh, I'm not going to say Where's my DDP? Yeah. Uh, hot dog news. Oh, yeah, we got a big one. Okay, this is Fox News. Once again, I just clicked on the top article. Uh, Joey Chestnut breaks world record in hot dog eating versus Kobayashi 15 years after their last meeting. I saw this earlier today, and I said, we have to talk about it. How often do we talk about hot dogs? And not only hot dogs, but hot dog eating challenges or contests on this show. I love hot dogs, and it's one of those foods that now that you say it, I'm going to be pretty much useless until I eat a hot dog. For the rest of the episode, that would be no different from the first part of this episode. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Roasted. Uh, let's see here. Joey Chestnut, he's a famous uh, yeah, competitive he eater. Him and Kobayashi stirred up the old rivalry again Monday in Netflix's unfinished beef special. Chestnut winning 83-66. to 66. That's a blowout. Chestnuts, 83 hot dogs broke the world record for most eaten in 10 minutes without dunking them in water. Okay, that's a, a note worth taking note of. Chestnut won $100,000 in prize money. He said, quote, I've been trying to hit 80 hot dogs for years, and without Kobayashi, I was never able to. He drives me. We weren't always nice to each other, but we pushed each other to be our best as a society the fact that we have food eating personalities how does that make you feel 
Um, it's a lot what's on my algorithm right now. A lot of hot dogs going in the mouth. Just one guy's just like, I'm going to go. He wears like, it's like bandana eats. And he just goes to like buffets and eats like 12 pounds of food. And, and then about. leaves. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. This whole situation with Joey Chestnut and Kobayashi, like Joey Chestnut, like talks some shit to him, like being competitive, like not really mean or anything. And Kobayashi is like, you do not disrespect my family. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to back home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. They, they, it comes off as disrespectful. It's like, welcome to America, bitch. <laughs> yeah. It's like. You're eating hot dogs on Staten Island. What yeah. do you expect? How dare you disrespect me like that? It's like, dude, you just ate 45 chicken wings in two minutes. Give me a break. I can't even imagine. Well, and the thing about this is, I think the average person thinks of, oh, eating contest. Yeah, I can just stuff my face with, like, my favorite foods. Wrong. Hot dogs, without dunking them in water, I actually... Uh, I mean, I get it, but the whole water dunking is weird. Soggy bread? Yeah. No, thank you. It's just you. to get it down the gullet. What well, if you I were, understand, what if you but that's what I'm one. saying. You're not leisurely pounding four hot dogs one afternoon. You are, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Imagine if you were in, like, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, and you're just up there, like, putting it in the bun and just it's ketchup like, on it. Like, anyone got some relish? Yeah, you're, like, perfectly putting the fixings on. And Jordan Michael finishes <laughs> with one and a half. <laughs> I can see it already. Uh, let's see a little history. Joey Chestnut first competed at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest in 2005. Then in 2007, he won his first title, downing 66 hot dogs to dethrone Kobayashi. It's crazy, though, because that's 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes, and then they switched it to 10, and the number still keeps climbing. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not like you're just eating your favorite foods. Like even a chicken wing eating contest, I'm sure they're not really giving a shit about what sauce is on there. They're just trying their best to not choke on a chicken bone. Uh, yeah, so Joey Chestnut, he's back. Apparently there's a Netflix series. So if I ruined it for you, There uh, could not apologies. be a greater sponsor for Joey Chestnut than Dude Wipes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... My God, the plumbing after this. Uh, maybe Tums or something, but shoving your face full of hot dogs. That is taking up our headlines today. Okay, well, I thought this was going to be a long episode, but we're cruising right along. So uh, let's get into our final segment here. Football season is upon us, so that means one thing. we got to make our No Brains, No Headache podcast picks. $100 bet between Matt and I. How many teams are we doing? Two AFC, two NFC. Would we each get one from each? Or each get I two think from we each? each get two. Okay. All right. So I have the odds pulled up if you are listening at home. Want to take along? I have the bet MGM odds now. Depending on when you're listening, they may have changed. But the top... Five teams are as follows. Kansas City Chiefs, San Francisco 49ers, Baltimore Ravens, Detroit Lions, Cincinnati Bengals. How are we going to decide who goes first? You got the Buffalo Nickel Handy? Or did we lose that? Um, it's somewhere over there, I think. How about you go first? Um, I will take the Chiefs. Great. So you're saying the Chiefs are going to win for a third year in a row. I don't. There's one other team that I think could beat them. All right. I like it when we get to this part of the year because we have two uh, live bets going. NFL Super Bowl bet. All right. So Matt took the Chiefs for his, AF, for his first AFC team. And the reason that I want to pick so many teams is just better odds of us. Like yeah. One person. But most of the time it would be like we each pick one team and they both miss the playoffs it's like well great well, this is really fun entertainment yeah okay um so i can go with any conference i want um uh, just give me one second here okay so matt takes the chiefs uh best odds to win uh <laughs> i know who i want yeah i'll just take the 49ers i don't want you to have them 49ers have been to the super bowl countless times in the last 
over many years. Can't seem to get the job done, but uh, I'll I take, think they're the best team. I'll take my favorite in the NFC, and I'm going to go with the Eagles. Okay, Matt is going with the Eagles from the NFC. I don't know. They, they really got to prove it year. I think their head coach is on the hot seat. Okay, I'll take the Ravens. They're the one team in the AFC that I think could beat the Chiefs. Derrick yeah. Henry and Lamar Jackson. Good luck stopping that. All right. So far, Matt's got Chiefs, Eagles. I got Ravens, 49ers. Now the picks get interesting because pretty much the top, like, uh, are I'll take the Carolina Panthers. Yep. You want the Panthers. I've talked myself into it. They're going to be good this year. <sighs> oh, Matt. According to BetMGM, the Carolina Panthers are the second-to-last team, plus 25000 Are you going to bet on them in real life? You might as well. Put down $5, retire early. <laughs> bet $100 and bet $5,000 and then get arrested for illegally gambling. Okay, here's my pick. I'm going to go with the Houston Texans. I'm really liking what they're doing. C.J. Stroud, second year. I know it's unheard of for young quarterbacks, unless your name is Ben Roethlisberger, to win a Super Bowl. Uh, but I could see him doing it. They have a ton of weapons. I think the defense is looking good. Houston Texans, my pick. Like the pick, and I'm going to go with... You have an I've... AFC team left. You have to pick AFC. <laughs> so did you not realize that? I'll take the Bengals. Okay, Matt's going Chiefs, Bengals. Let's see, I have an NFC team left. All right, so my options are, oh, God, the Lions, Packers, great. Cowboys, Rams, Falcons. I don't know why. I kind of like, I why like, are, why I are like the, this stretch. Why are the Dolphins so low? I like this stretch. Like, if you were going from middle of the pack team, I kind of like the Dolphins, Rams, Falcons area. Anything below that, I just don't think anybody has a chance. Except for the Panthers. Except for the Panthers. I just, uh, I don't think the Lions have what it takes. I hate the Packers and Cowboys with my all my guts, so that leaves me with the Rams. I'll take the L.A. Rams. At least they have been there recently and have a Super Bowl winning quarterback and head coach. So there is our picks. Matt has the Chiefs, Bengals, Eagles, Panthers. <laughs> I have Ravens, Texans, 49ers, Rams for our $100 podcast bet. Who are you picking to win the Super Bowl? Let us know on social media. Check out our pages uh, at nobrains underscore no headache. Search no brains, no headache, NBNH podcast, whatever you want. The old Vikings are plus 10,000. Not great. Not really happy about that. Uh, but we also have uh, my fantasy baseball team, the Jahungas. Now, if you've been following the show for a while, you know that this isn't just my team. This is our team, okay? I'm making the day-to-day -day decisions, yes, but this is for us, okay? This isn't just for me. So the Jahungas, Matt, actually squeaked our way into second place. Yeah, we hopped up from fourth to second place in the last couple of weeks of the regular season. So this is actually day one uh, of the playoffs. So the Jahungas are currently in the playoffs right now. I used a couple of last week's acqu acquisitions to bolster the roster for this week to kind of get a little bit of a head start. I'm playing Team Dicks real small. So it should be a pretty good matchup. Um, I also don't know. I'd have to look back at my Venmo history to see if we even pitched in money for this because when I do win, the Jahungas will be a dynasty, and I may only be winning pride because, like I said, I don't know if we even pitched in, and I don't want to be the dick who, like, texts the commissioner. You like, all owe me money Where's now? my money at? And it's like, dude, we didn't pitch any money in. All it was was 20 bucks a team, so, like, $160 goes far away for an entrepreneur slash comedian. Um don't really have a whole lot going for me, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be the sad one. Sad in pants. Um, I'm not unironically wearing a robe. But I also do for the uh, Jahungas, I do pick 
players with interesting names. I'll stream pictures. This one guy's name is Osvaldo Bido. Pitcher for the A's. I was going to say. Pick him up every week. Giants. <laughs> Um, I also went with the Asian Persuasion. I got Seiya Suzuki and Shohei Otani on my team. Uh, so we're pretty much going to win it all. Playing for pride, guys. The Jahungas just isn't for me. It is for all of us, and I think that puts an end to our show. Yeah, we made some really good time. So uh, make sure you're following us on social media. Like I said, that's at no brains, no headache or at no brains underscore no headache youtube huge you may be watching right now make sure you're subscribing if you're not watching youtube hop on over there subscribe get on the youtube train because matt's doing a really good job with that and i can see all you assholes the ones that do listen to it only like five percent are subscribed so just hit one button maybe the like too do us a favor all right we've been here for 215 episodes you better, better just get on board because I don't think we're really going anywhere. Yep. Unless unless Matt doesn't stock the fridge with Diet Dr. Pepper by the next time I show up in the studio, this thing could be torn yep. apart, the just, studio. Just, pound, uh, just past, wow, just past 30,000 followers on, there you go. on social media. So There you go. We are rising to the top just like the cream, baby. All right, episode 215. We have upcoming shows. Let's see, Saturday, September 28th, I can confirm I got some very good news. I was very happy in pants when I got this message. Saturday, September 28th, the show is on, okay? And that's at Dakota Stage Theater, Matt and myself, and we have two comedians from Fargo, Minneapolis area, uh, Josh and Blaze. We're really excited to have them. We've done shows with them in the past or have seen them perform, so that's why we chose the best comedians possible for this show, I'm going to be hosting. Matt's going to get it started off, and then we're going to hand it to some true professionals after that. So it's going to be a good time. Here's the thing. As a listener of the podcast, I'm giving you a little bit of inside info. It's not really. If you just read the tickets, you'd find this out <laughs> also. But I did early bird pricing for this one. That's the first time we've offered an early bird pricing. Get a discount. Get your best value for the show coming up. I think that from today the time of this recording i think we have two more weeks left until that price rises so i don't want to hear it i don't want to say, oh the tickets are too expensive jordan i can't afford it i can't afford to go to your show i drank 10 summer shandies the other day had no problem paying for those but going to your show can't do it check it out all right get the early bird pricing that's going to be your best price get a date okay you be like, hey, do you want to go to a comedy show? They're going to be like, I didn't even know we had comedy in Bismarck. That's probably what they're going to say. You're going to be like, well, guess what? They do, and I got us tickets. And then it's going to be awesome. You're going to have one of the best nights of your life. You can come out. We're going to have merchandise, all right? I was sweating in a shop for two days making these T-shirts, okay? So we got T-shirts. That's why they call it a sweatshop. Sweatshop, bingo, thank you. I got all these t-shirts for you. We got a couple limited uh, colors, and then we just have our uh, just our basic shirt. So you're going to have to come check those out. Get yourself a t-shirt. We got stickers there. Oh, my God. We got stickers there, and we'll have some more merch as well. Dakota Stage Theater, that's 412 East Main in Bismarck. Saturday, September 28th, at the very least. Take a moment right now. We know you're at work. You're slacking off. You probably got a little nicotine in the lip. Just go on the calendar and write, hey, comedy show. I got to go check that out. If you can't make it to that one because you're just a useless prick, come to October 17th. That's a Thursday. Laughing Sun Brewery. Actually, Matt and I need to have a meeting about this show. We need to make some decisions. But Matt and I will be there. That's a No Brains, No Headache production. And then the Minot Show. That's where I turn it over to you. Which is where uh, <laughs> November 15th. We were announced that we are doing a show in Minot at the Drop Zone. No idea where it's at. I'll probably look it up the day of. We That's in Minot. There. So if you're a Minot area listener, we're coming to you for comedy. So come check out our show. Uh, we're looking to add some shows. So stay tuned for that. Or if you or somebody you know is interested in booking us for comedy shows, uh, reach out. I'd love to talk to you and figure something out. Uh, always willing to negotiate and make sure that you get the best value and have a great time. So that's a No Brains, No Headache Productions there for you. Uh, every Wednesday in Bismarck, we have 
open mic night this week, September 4th. Gideon's Brewing Company, I'll be hosting that. Starts at 8 p.m. And then every other week is at Jimmy V's. We flip-flop back and forth. So it was actually a pretty good open mic last week. I got to admit, the crowd the was last, nice. The last th- two have been really good. Did you enjoy my the opening to my set? Do you remember it? Uh, you did the Ricky Bobby like mumble. Yeah, I went up and I was like, hey, my, my, name's, my name's Jordan. I, I, I feel really warm. I, I, this is a great opportunity. And then somebody was like, speak up. Like, oh, you want me to speak up? I just grabbed the microphone out of the mic's tent. Jimmy V's. <laughs> you got to get their attention. I did uh, a new joke where I talk about how it used to be really hard to find a buyer for alcohol. Be like, I need some 99 bananas and some fentanyl. <laughs> And now it's hard to find but, underage kids to buy alcohol for. Yeah. I'm just trying to give back to the community. Now it's like they already just put the fentanyl in stuff, so I don't even have to order it. Yeah, you don't even have to buy it separately. It comes included, the old two-for-one, as we call it. All right, that was episode 215. Up next, we have 216. Thank you so much for listening. See you next week. Love you. Forget it, Donnie. You're out of your element. Look, I'm hung over two, all right? We're going to suck it up. We're going to put one in the end zone. It once 